Do you have a big project coming up, but you feel overwhelmed by all the tasks and deadlines? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a project planner in Excel that will keep you organized, focused, and most importantly, on track. And the best part, I'm giving you the free Excel template to get started right away. So let's get going. In our template tracker today, we are going to be opening up a restaurant. In our restaurant, we're going to have the project start date. The number of days are going to be calculated depending on today's date. And we're going to have some task name here assigned to number of days, start and end date, progress, priority, as well as the status. We're going to use some of the complex conditional formatting logic. So if you type in progress, these are coming up here. Completed are going to be highlighted. Now, the difference between progress here and progress here is that the date hasn't completed yet. If the date is overdue, it's going to highlight it in red. We're also going to have dynamically filled up our days of the week as well as the actual date, depending on when we're going to start the project. Another use of conditional formatting to highlight the actual Gantt chart here. So as you can see, we have everything built up right here and we're going to add some filters and slices over here so we can see in priority what's a low priority what's a medium priority or what is a high priority you could also filter by the statuses of what's in progress what's not started and what is complete so let's get going and build this template now let's just take this little table here so control c and we are going to paste it over here just to make it easier for us. I'm going to show you how this works. You can change the formatting, of course. Now, the numbers of days in progress. This project start date is going to be formatted as a date. So make sure you go in and you choose the date format that you prefer. If you want to have it as December, you can do that as well. Number of days in progress. How to calculate this is we take today's date. The formula is today. Open and close brackets take away the date that the project started you can see that is 12 days since the project started now if you want to change this to 1 1 25 let's just see what happens it tells you fourth off four days in progress so this is a very simple formula that you can add to your tracker now let's just change the date back we go back to the template and all we need to have is a task name assigned to now these we can simply just take it from here obviously this is just text that's so very simple to be able to do and we are going to put it right here so we have our task our name etc same thing here these are just details you can change it to whatever logics that you want in terms of your colors in terms of your shadings let's go here let's just paste this here you can see all of the priorities here add in our numbers here and now we have 10 now the task names we are simply just going to take these we can control copy the whole control c now here control shift v so that's going to just copy it across you can just add in your data as you want, your task names assigned to, etc. Now, the number of days, again, this is something that we can just simply take from our sheet here and we can just add it here. That simply just shows you how you can add it again. Now, make sure that these two columns here are formatted as a date. Control one, all you need to do is go down to date and we can choose our date format here. Now, what we do is the start date of the project is going to be this. Press OK. Now, this is going to be dynamic. So if you change this to 1125, that is automatically going to bring it up. And what we can do now is you can add an end date if you want. Now, here is just a simple way of adding a formula so that the end date can be calculated from the task days. So all we need to do is equals, take the start date, add the number of days and we can close this up so this will automatically calculate the number of days let's change it to three days and see what happens to the date here goes to the 27th control set now what you can do with your project plan is if tasks are dependent on each other you can simply take the start date as the end date of the previous task now if you want to start it on the next day you can just add simply a one here and then that way it starts on the next day rather than the exact same date okay now what we can do is drag this down drag this down and see what happens there you go we have a perfectly added up date calendar here 
Now here, all we're going to do is add a percentage. Now, if you add 100, that's not going to do anything. So the first thing we need to do is create a percentage format for our cells here. Let's add 100 here. Let's add 50 here. Let's add 10 over here. Now, one thing we're going to do is conditional formatting here. So highlight your column right here, conditional formatting. And we are going to go to color scales, data bars. Now, let's choose a green data bar. Now, as you notice, you have 100%, which is fully covered. 50 is half and 10 is there. Now, if we just go down and change this to 50, see what happens. The data bar goes all the way, but we want to make sure that we show this as a percentage of 100. So once again, highlight this, go to conditional formatting, go to manage rules. Now here, you need to click into the edit rule. Once you go there, what you'll notice is the values are automatic. The maximum value is automatic depending on what's added into the actual cell. And we actually want to go to a number and our maximum number is going to be one because one is the full number of 100%. Now see what happens. Have a look here and you'll see what happens. The 50 will come to half, press apply, and then you go. So you can actually see the progress. And if you type in 100, you get that. If you type in 80, you get that. If you type in 50, 40, 30. So now it gives you a much better visual representation of the actual percentage. When it comes to priority, we want a low, medium and high over here. So once again, just highlight your cells. We're going to go across to data. We're going to go to data validation and once again, go to list. Now, instead of choosing the source of the list, as it's only a small amount of values that are not really going to change, we're just going to type them in low, medium and high. And then that way we have our logics here. So you can click into low, medium, high right here and type that in as well. So there we go, low, medium, high. Once again, our status is also a data validated list. So that's a very simple one to do, just any value list and status is in progress. Let's do that in progress, not started. And then we have completed. So these are once again, your values that you can add just in a drop down list so there aren't any spelling mistakes. Okay, there we go. In progress, and we just continue that way. Now we're going to start to add the dates over here. So here we want the date, and here we want today's date. Now, what we do is press equals and we go to the project start date. That way, our list is going to always be dynamic. Now, as you can see, the format here is very big and we want to have a smaller format. So just control one. Let's go and see how we want our date format to be. If you don't find it here, you just go to custom and in custom, we have a number of different options or you can simply just go in and do day day and month month. If that's what you want, press OK. And you'll see that we have the day, day, month, month format over here. Now, this can be dragged as much as you want. There you go. Now, what's happening here is it's not adding the previous one. So all we do is this, add this plus one. OK, now this is going to be dynamic and you can just continue adding this for as long as you want. OK, so let's just continue to the end of Feb. Okay, there we go. We are at March now. Let's take our data here and all we do highlight our cells. We can simply just go back to our cells here. Okay, and just double click. As we double click, we can see everything come together. Now here we want to have the days of the week. So all we do is we take this once again and once again it has the same format. But all we're going to do is change the format here and the format here can be day day. Okay so I'll give you the option there. You can see that it's not really that great so we're going to type in another D to have a look. All right now we have a Tuesday here. Let's center this up see what happens. So again depends on the options that you want. You can simply just have this as you go along. As you can see, you can have the same things over here. So just drag it along. Now, sometimes you might just want to have just the actual letter. That is an easy option as well. I'll just show you that up here so that you can see it's pretty simple to do as well. 
So let me show you another way where we can type in text, the formula text. We're going to take the value from the date and we are going to convert this value in to day, day, day. Now, if we close that up, you see what happens, okay? You will see that you get a Tuesday. And if we just drag this a couple of cells, you'll see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this has just become a text from the actual field rather than the actual format of the, num of the actual date becoming a Tuesday or Wednesday. This is important because now what we're going to do is use a formula called left. We add the left formula. Now these are the texts over here. What you need to do is a comma and the number of characters. Because we just want the first letter to come up, we are going to type in one. The, there we go. Let's just type in one and see what happens. You get a T. Now if we do the same thing and add two, we're going to get two letters. So if you want to add one letter, two letter, three letters, it's pretty easy to be able to do that. Now we can just take that, dump that there and it will update our formulas accordingly. So just another option of how you want to see your actual format. Now control C, control V to paste the formula and you have your datas all set up right there. Now let's just change the format over here. Let's go and change both our columns here to something a little bit smaller in font. So I usually like to keep an eight there. Just double click it so it can adjust our columns automatically. Now what we can do is take this and change it into a green color. Now let's add our conditional formatting to highlight the date. So let's go back to our sheet here. This is what we want to add. So we are going to take the data formula from the actual date of this start date and we're going to take it against the start date and end date. So if it's in between these two dates, we are going to make sure that the cells next to the calendar are highlighted dynamically. So let's go here. So the first thing we need to do is just highlight the full area where we want our data validation to go to. Now you can continue to add this at a later stage. You just paint format painter and continue. Go up to conditional formatting. Now we go to a new rule and a new rule is going to be based on a formula. Now, what do we want to do? So here it's pretty simple. I'll just move this down here. The formula is an AND formula. So we need to look for two logics. So equals AND, okay. Now the AND formula is something that can allow you to look at two different logics and do something according to that. Now, what we want is we want to take this here. Now we don't want to lock it. We want this to move along the actual row number six. So we're just going to lock number six and therefore let's start here j dollar six now what we're going to do is make sure that the j dollar six is a greater than or equal to e7 right here now once again we don't want to lock this we want it to be moving down the column so all we do is just highlight this and we just take away the e7 right here the next thing is we want the same thing so we want the j j dollar six which is this cell here j dollar six to be less than or equal to here we have f7 so we have the f7 end date right here now once again we wanted to move down so this is what we wanted to do we are going to change the format now this is going to be in a let's change it to a blue color press ok now ok here and there you go now you can simply just change the days of the week and you can see that the conditional formatting updates dynamically now when something's completed we want to highlight it change the font to green and we want to just strike through it so how do we do that we simply go and take our data here all we do is then go to conditional formatting highlight rules now we go to a new rule now what we want to do is we want to base a formula on a cell once again so here we want this cell here so once again let's not lock it but we want to lock the row so i7 equals completed so once we have that we can simply just add completed what happens when something is completed we want to format it 
And how do we want to format it? We go to the font. We want it to be green and we can bold it as well. And we're going to have a strike through. Press OK, press OK. And now you see that anything that's completed will be struck through. So let's just test this with this right here. And you can see that that's gone as a strike through as well. So that's great. That's just another way to do it. Now, the last one that we need to do is this, where it's going to be highlighted and italicized in red when something has not been completed. However, the date has passed. The end date has already passed. That way you can really see what are the actual tasks that have not been completed within the time that it's set. Now, once again, let's highlight our data set here. And what we're going to do is go to conditional formatting, a new rule, and once again, a formula. Now I'm just copy and pasting this formula. Once again, it's a logic that's going to look at two different things. It's going to be looking at the actual status. If the status is not completed and the actual end date is less than today, that means we've overshot our date. Go to format. Let's go to automatic we go to color let's go to red bold and italicize press ok and let's apply this to see what happens now if this is let's change our date here just to see what happens so let's go okay so 24 is what we need and we see that this item here, the create business plan that Bob had to do is not completed. It should have been done on the first, but it's still in progress. However, if we go here and add 100 percent, you'll see that still comes into green. This is where the logic applies if it's green and now it's complete. The last thing that we're going to do is add some slices to our data. So the first thing we have to do to do that is create a little table format. Highlight our data, control and T. And when we do that, my table has headers, press OK. Now you'll see the format go a little bit crazy. All you need to do is go back up here and change it back to the date here. Now what happens is the sequence will not work in a table. So you're just going to have to add the numbers manually. You can just drag them down to the numbers that you need. Now this is the only thing that may not work for you when you're creating it. This will now allow you to go across and insert a slicer. So you be on the table design, press slicer. Once you've pressed the slicer, all we need to do is we go to progress and we go to we go priority and status press OK. Now you'll see we have two bars come up over here. All we do is here. We can change this to three columns. OK, and we're going to change it to this and we're going to make this a little bit smaller and move that across. The same thing here. We change this, change it to three, change it to green and we're just going to make it a little bit wider. OK, so now we can see not started in progress and completed. OK, now let's just make this a little bit smaller so you can see how this works. When we click onto low, you'll see that it filters the low. When we click into medium, high, clear that up and we want it started in progress completed. That way you can filter using both of the slices to see exactly what you want to see inside of your template. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on mastering Excel and project management. Comment below, let me know how you're using this template. I'd love to hear about your projects. Until next time, happy spreadsheeting.